Dag sê en welkom by my Yo Pipe kanaal en vandag sy video wees ek vir julle allemaal hoe om een nieuwe klokkie te bouwen vir een wit goud ring. Voel vry om vir die video een duim op te wees en sluit geris aan by my kanaal. Dankie. So today we've got this um, 18 karat white gold solitaire that had uh, lost its diamond. And what's interesting about this particular setting is typically we'll find that the tips will wear down to a point and then you have it hook, it opens up and it falls out. But in this particular case, if you had a look at the sides of these claws, you'll see how thin the sides are. These claws have been cut too deep. Can you see the side there? It's literally right on the edge. Which means, basically, that the person who assembled this particular ring bought the wrong setting and then the setter set the stone into the setting, which was too small for it, which meant that they had to cut it to accommodate the stone, which is exactly why probably fabric or something caught onto this and not because of worn claws but because of weak sides this uh, this diamond came out so in today's video I'm going to be removing the setting the whole part that holds the diamond retaining the shank as it is remaking the actual setting the appropriate size and resetting the diamond the very first thing that I need to establish is uh, especially not to change the look of the ring is to measure the existing claws to make sure that we've got an exact replica and by the look of it uh, we'll, we'll start with one millimeter claws it's a four claw setting so you need pretty chunky claws on these uh, one millimeter it measures and that's what I'm going to do next so the very first step is to create the wire I use 18 karat white gold I cast it I roll it through a rolling mill and I get to the point where we can then anneal it when I say anneal I mean it actually softens the metal when we hammer it when we work with it when I put it through a rolling mill we're compressing it and what I mean by that is when you're casting metal when you're buying a casted product you actually have a liquid metal that falls into a solid shape from one point to the next and that's where it ends what we do is by going through the process of rolling it and hand working it and hammering it you typically uh, find that the metal is much harder, it's far more compressed which gives you much longer wear on the ring as well as and it's well it's handmade at the end of the day so it's a better product. All right we're almost there I've got the the wire drawn down to the point that I needed drawn down so it's not uh, you know it's gone down from I think when you saw it last that thickness to this thickness which is just over a millimeter is what I need I've put it into a little pin vise, uh, which will allow me to have a little bit more control over this point over here. I'm now going to file a taper on top of this, so that we can put it through a draw plate. This way, pull it and create a round wire of a millimeter. Uh, just to explain what a draw plate is, this is a large version of it. The basic function here is to put the wire in this side and draw it out that side, so it creates a round shape. Here we go, we've got the draw plate in a bench vise. I'll be going through this hole, that hole, that hole, possibly through that one. We'll measure it from here and see where we're at. I'm going to use a little bit of this 3-in-1 um, oil just to give the wire a little bit more of a uh, chance to get through the holes because essentially we are compressing it. Let's measure. I am on 1.1, 1.09 at this stage. It's still not perfectly round, so we'll carry on until we get to one. One point oh three is pretty good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to straighten this by heating up the wire and uh, pulling on it 
so to get that curve out of it and because of that we're actually going to thin the wire out just ever so slightly which means we'll probably end up on exactly one millimeter I've annealed the wire I'm going to now just pull it straight this is all to do with that process with hardening the metal the whole time and compressing it this is what gives it its strength so I'm gonna put one end over here in the vise as you can see that's not perfectly straight it's got a nice angle on it and I'm going to use the pliers tongs on the other side and I'm going to get a give it a consistent pull to one direction I'm going to release it now with a perfectly straight wire so I'll be cutting sections of this to make the collet now alright we're ready to solder I have my flux I have my solder pick I have a set of pliers on my hand for absolutely no reason. I'll put those down. I'm going to be using an 18 karat white gold hard solder for this one. We don't want rings to fall apart when we start working on them again for whatever reason. I've got the two wires in a jig and I'm quickly going to just solder them together. Bear with me. This is quite a rough pre-soldered look, but this is what the setting looks like. Yeah, so here we go. The setting is uh, complete now. Uh, the angle is slightly wider, which will accommodate the bigger stone. Um, the next step is I'm going to remove this uh, setting from the ring and re-solder that one back into the uh, shank position. Next step is I'm going to remove the collet by heating the ring and then removing this while under heat, removing the setting out when the solder melts. Clean it all up, replace the setting into that slot right there and then uh, I'll show you guys how we set the stone. go setting this out and effectively I just need to slip this one in there like that. Okay, guys, this is the ring now the new setting is mounted so I've removed the previous setting and I've brought this one back in there there's a lot more clarity on the ring right now there's a gap over there which was filled with solder previously so it's it's, it's a lot tidier and uh, of course, as I've said before, this size of the, uh, the angle of the actual claws are correct now. The thickness is correct. So next thing for me to do is to uh, tidy it up and then to set. I'm sanding down the ring. So this is the process that you go through just before a polish. And um, really what I'm doing is I'm removing all the tiny little bumps, all the little scratches with a very fine sandpaper to make sure that we've got a very smooth finish that we can then put onto the polishing mode. Okay, we get to the end now. The setting has been soldered in. I've cleaned up the ring all around the areas where I'm not gonna have access once I've set the stone. I'm just about to set the stone now. This is a, uh, this is a vise uh, that I'm gonna be using. It secures the ring completely and uh, I'll be using a Leica A60 microscope to do the set work and to make sure that all the solder joints are perfect. I'll be dropping the stone in around there. Just about to set the stone right now. You can actually see the excess of the outside of that metal now. This is what you're looking for. You're looking for a nice and sturdy outside area where we had very, very, very little of that in the previous setting. So we know the stone is right size for the setting, the setting is right size for the stone. Let me get that in quickly and we can get this job done. If you've ever wondered how to set these, it's literally just pair of pliers.
that's it guys thank you very much for watching the video all the way to the end like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and i will see you next time